Hi there, I'm Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. We're here every Monday, 4.30pm, to talk about the boxing action of the weekend just gone. And because I did a uh, fairly in-depth performance review, if you like, of Conor Ben's win over Sebastian Formella um, in a headline fight from Matchroom Show on Saturday night at Wembley Arena, for this vlog I'll be focusing more on the undercard um, of that show, particularly the two heavyweight fights um, that preceded the main event. And there's still plenty to talk about because Alan Babich is still rolling on. He is now 6-0 and with six knockouts and still yet to go beyond round three um, after getting rid of Tom Little, um, the Jippopotamus, probably one of the best nicknames in all of boxing. Um, but unfortunately, the performance didn't quite match up um, to that level of creativity. Um, didn't look that way in the first round. Um, little boxing well. Obviously came in at his career lightest weight. Um, was boxing well. Picking Babbage off at times. But mostly just tucking up. Hoping for the early storm that Babbage always brings to subside. Problem is we don't know if and when it subsides. Because he's yet to go past that third round. Um, and Little was taking shots. He was tucking up. Moving his head well. But he was still taking his fair share of blows. Particularly body punches. Um, seemed to be weakening him while he was waiting to get his opportunities. Um, and then Babich got, I think he knocked him down in the second and then again in the third or at the start of the third and at the end of the third. One of the two, but it, it, there was a couple of knockdowns. But it's Babich is a strange one because for a heavyweight, and this is partially because he's small enough potentially to make cruise weight, although he's got no interest in it, he throws a hell of a lot of punches. You know, people talk about Joe Joyce being a high volume puncher for a heavyweight and he does it over 10 or 12 rounds some of the time. Um, but Babich, certainly over a shorter format, is able to unleash a huge number of flurries. Um, and he's got quite good hand speed as well. When he throws in combination, his hands move quite quickly. And there's definitely a bit of venom behind them. Although I wouldn't say he's a massive puncher, particularly not a heavyweight. He's more that, you know, every shot's got some heft behind it, but he's not a concussive one-punch hitter, I wouldn't say necessarily, certainly not at the highest level. Um, but he, he carries a whack, but his main attribute, of course, is that he's relentless. He's on his opponent from the opening bell until it ends, as far as we know, at this stage. Um, and he didn't give little much room to breathe or to think or to recover, I suppose, um, most importantly. Um, so, yeah, it was interesting. I think... He is easy to hit though, Babich. He's quite reckless coming forward. He can be picked off when he's waiting for opportunities where he doesn't wait very often. But when he does, he can be picked off. You know, Little had success with body shots and a sharp jab at times. Um, but just didn't throw enough or possess sufficient power to really dissuade um, Babich from continually chugging forward and um, landing his shots and, and the more telling shots. And, and fair play to Babich for doing that. But he asked for a step up in the post fight interview. I think he needs. A step up. I think Hergovic is too big. Uh, Philip Hergovic, his former, his rival, former amateur teammate as well um, in Croatia. I think he has too big a step up at this stage. He's far more experienced already as a pro. Technically, seems superior as well. I wouldn't like to see that next for Babic. Um, although it would sell really well because of all the talk and the fact they're both from the same country, heavyweights, of course. I'd like to see Babic take another kind of intermediate fight between the level he's competing at now. And someone like Hergovic, who's generally recognised as one of the, I'd say, I don't know, top five, top ten heavyweight prospects in the world at the moment, if we still consider him a prospect. Um, so I'm not sure who I'd want next for Babic. Well, you know, if he's going to continue to compete domestically, um, who have we got? You know, he's not going to fight Fabio Wardley, who we'll talk about in a minute, because they're both part of the Dillian White managerial um, outfit. So they're not obviously going to fight each other. But then who else is in and around? Dave Allen's just retired, so that fight will never happen now. Um, David Price, who I spoke to yesterday, you can see that um, on the channel at some point. He He's interested in coming back for the right fight. Um, Style-wise, I think a lot of people would say Babbage is all wrong for him. But then Price certainly does have that fight-ending power um, to stop a much smaller heavyweight like Babbage in coming forward. Um so, yeah, David Price is someone that springs to mind. Nathan Gorman is another. But the chances are that if the winner of Daniel Dwight against Joe Joyce this weekend relinquishes the British title after their victory, and you would think they would, um, it would be what two of Gorman, Wardley, Price, two of those three who are nominated to compete for the vacant Lonsdale belt. So whoever doesn't get that fight, maybe they should be someone for Babich. 
um, next up. Um, but then on the continent, there's probably loads of other people that can give him longer rounds, teach him a few things. Maybe we should get Kevin Johnson over. You know, he won't necessarily come to win, although he's had a couple of upsets not too long ago. But he will certainly give him rounds. I don't see Babich blasting him out um, in the first couple like he has with his opponent so far, or third, you know, more recently. So maybe bring someone like that or a younger version of Kingpin, whoever that kind of durable tester, testing fighter is that we can bring over now. Maybe do that for Babich. And then if, if he comes through with flying colours from that test, then maybe make the Hergovic fight. But yeah, uh, you know, not a perfect fighter by any means, but a very exciting fighter to watch. And he's got the right mentality as well. So we look forward to seeing where the Alan Babich journey goes next. Um, but yeah, the most explosive finish and perhaps most surprising as well in the way it came and how early it came was the English heavyweight champion Fabio Wardley, who I'm actually going to be speaking to later today to review his own performance. But he got rid of the usually durable Richard Larty, who only recently took Nathan Gorman the distance and even went into the fourth round of a what was a real shootout with Daniel Dubois not too long ago. Um, Wardley got him out there in round two. And the ending seemingly came out of nowhere. So Wardley enjoyed a decent enough opening round. He was on his toes, good lateral movement, excellent jab. But, but nothing particularly explosive or dangerous early on. And then in round two, they were just kind of sizing each other up. Um, Wardley was kind of pouring with the jab, looking for opportunities. And then just suddenly stepped in and landed a quick left hook, right hook combination. And the right hook seemed to land just above uh, Larty's left ear. Um, so yeah, just above Larty's left ear. So just on the temple and just completely discombobulated him. Larty went down. Um, like he'd been hit by a hammer, which in a way he had, um, had to be uh, helped to his stall later on, given oxygen for quite a long time. There were worrying moments after the fight, uh, but thankfully he recovered, um, was able to leave under his own steam. But just a, a very um, exciting and uh, an important win for Wardley. I thought it was a bit of a nothing fight coming in, in the, you know, Wardley was expected to win. The main question was whether he could stop Larty. There was no, it wasn't a 50-50 fight or even close. But by stopping him so early and in the fashion that he did, it now does get people talking more about Wardley and making those comparisons with Dubois, Gorman and so on. And you would expect Wardley to be right at the front of the queue for a British title shot when that does become vacant. Um, if he chooses to go in that direction, I'll obviously be asking him about that later. Um, but yeah, if, if he does decide to do that, would you back him at this stage against David Price? Would you back him against Nathan Gorman? I mean, they're good fights. You know, just below that um, British heavyweights who are approaching or at world level, there's a thriving domestic scene underneath with the top three or four. You know, what about Wardley against a Huey Fury um, in a couple of fights as well? Let's not forget him. So there's some decent heavyweight attractions to come. But I just thought Wardley, he even said after me afterwards for, you know, it was a bit of a shot back at people who've said he hasn't got the requisite size or the requisite power to compete with the giants of the heavyweight division. Although Larty's not a giant, he is durable, generally. And um, Wardley just took him out of there early on, as he pleased. And with shots that didn't even look particularly, uh, you know, pivotal when they landed, but were very well placed and with sufficient force. And that's all you really need, isn't it? A heavyweight, you're, these are big guys whacking each other and it's not, doesn't necessarily take a full-blooded punch to take someone out of there. So well done to Wardley for that. That's a bit of a feat, stopping Larty that early. Um, so yeah, we shall see where they both go, but I'd say Wardley being the younger man and being perhaps the more versatile may have a higher upside than Alan Babich out of those two Dillian White affiliated heavyweights, but they're both going to benefit from being around White, getting the benefit of his experience, sparring him on occasion as well. I know Wardley's also been out and sparred Alexander Usyk a couple of times as well. Um, and that's invaluable experience. So they've both got definitely the right attitude towards self-improvement, um, but we'll see which one can, can make it further. But they're both on upward trajectories at the moment, so it's exciting to see. Now, I'll be back on Thursday with Flexpectations, obviously with a, an in-depth preview of Daniel Dubois against Joe Joyce. Um, and then the following Monday, again, 4.30pm for the next Reflections, which will look back on Daniel Dubois, Joe Joyce and the rest of that card. Really appreciate your time. As always, please leave comments below. Um, who do you think is going further, Babich or Wardley? What do you like or dislike about each man? It'd be really great to get your views and, and how they performed, of course, on Saturday night. Um, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks very much. See you later.